yeah, you are nice. Allah's asking all mankind. So that everyone's been asked this question. What is that thing which has taken you away from your Lord who is the most generous? Meaning, most generous, he's given us our eyesight, he's given us our hearing, our breathing. The fact that when we were born and our mothers took care of us, Allah put that in our heart. So we have to ask ourselves, what is that thing that's stopping me from going to, to Allah, to God? Some people is friends, some people is society, some people is, is wealth. Presence of friends and family. That's it. I would say that. To the point where. Okay. Do you think they'd be upset if you became Muslim? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, upset? No. No. Yeah, because there's some people who they can conceal it, can't they? Mm. They can conceal it for a while. And slowly. My friends would be proud. Your parents will be proud, yeah. so what's holding right, you? Come, come, come. Oh. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. Will be proud. Allah, you're take welcome. that step. He was saying that if you take that step, Allah, He takes, comes closer to you. What's, yeah. what's in your mind? Because the, the thing is, what it is, it's, it's like, it's like we have, we have tasted something which is sweet, and we want it for other people. But at the same time, we don't want to take that sweet and ram it down someone's throat. So. I, I know it seems a bit strange when you've got three men around you, they're all older than <laughs> you, they've got beards, he's this <laughs> That's big. Right, that's right. That's yeah. right. So what is, what is on your mind? Because the problem is, we all like talking about this subject, but we'll leave it to you. Only this week, I'm, I'm completely empty right now. But I digest a lot of information, you know? yeah. that's the same time. I can go home when actually, like, I go home, I go home thinking. Yeah, yeah before I even go to bed, I'll be thinking about, you know, like, Repeat over and over in my head, you know, maybe I should take the step, maybe I should take the chance. But right now I'm just like it's odd. Okay. I think I think it's something that you've wanted for a while because you even said it. Yeah. You know, I, I, let me just give my story just briefly. I, I was in Ethiopia, right? And there were some people they were going away for a few days, like three days, to, to a village. And, and I said, can I come? He said, in order for you to come, you have to be a Muslim. And I was kind of like, I was feeling it. I was res researching to become a Muslim. But I'm talking about like eight months, quite a long time. But the Imam said to me, he said, listen, look at Islam like a coat. Just put it on, yeah? And wear the coat, come with us. I took Shahada and, and he said to me like, if you want to take it off, it's up to you. But I don't feel like you're going to want to take it off afterwards. I went with them, and when they came back, I didn't want to take that coat off. And, and actually, the thing that I wanted was a woman, right? It didn't work out, but I still kept my Islam. You got something better. So, yeah. Yeah, so I understand. understand. I came back to England, I found brothers like this and that, and I could not let go. My enemy was the downside. <laughs> so, so you believe in God, you believe in the message of all of the prophets before, you believe in the Quran as well as the uh, books of before. So, <laughs> what's stopping you really? As in, you, you, you want to, it's clear. And the brothers giving you, furnished you with so much information. And the I brothers. Like, I think uh, it would be nice, uh, right, really be nice. They just see, you see how you guys are always like Westford, isn't it? They just see me and my friends probably like come like from around like. What, in cinemas and everything, and then we're just here, and you guys saw this exact moment. My friends are all witnessing that. It would be nice. I feel it would be that. Because most of my friends, your friends, when they... are, your friends can witness easily. Look. Mm. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> if something is meant for you, it will never pass you. If something passes you, it was never meant for you. That's why you can't relinquish these moments. Like I said, and brother said, if you leave her, anything can happen. God forbid. And if you believe all of the things, then oh, there's nothing really left for you. It's a simple statement. Yeah? It's a simple statement. Listen to what the brother says. And if you're comfortable with it, go along with it. If you're not, then you go home and you think about it. There is no compulsion now. So listen to the statement. It's a simple statement that brings you into the fold of Islam. Yes, it's oh, We're here every Saturday. Every Saturday. But listen to how simple it is. Because most of the time I'm just at library with us. I go six oh, no, for Okay, you know what? Yeah.
Take the brother's number. Let, yeah, but just let me tell you what the statement is. Yeah. yeah. Just so you know. Basically, the, the difference between the situation of someone not being a Muslim and becoming a Muslim, and we would say being on the right path, or being in darkness, being on the wrong path, and coming to the right path, being from those people who are uh, ending the hellfire to those people in paradise is very simple. It is you, you bear witness. So it's something which you know about, it's something which you confess openly, you bear witness that nothing has the right to be worshipped and to have that. No, no stone, no tree, no prophet, no angel deserves to be worshipped. Only God alone, Allah alone. And that you bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last messenger, he's the worshipper and the messenger of Allah. That statement, when a person says it with their tongue and they believe it from their heart, that makes them a Muslim. Simple statement. Can you make that statement? Or do you want to think about it? What do you want to do? Think about it. I need more time. No problem. No more problem. Time. No mm. problem. So okay. what, put your, put your, tap your number in here. I feel you're, you're an inch away. I feel like you, you believe, you know, but something's just holding you back. You've heard this statement, even if you were to leave here, make the intention within yourself, because at the end of the day, it's not me or the brother that's going to be with you, and we don't know what's going to happen. Allah. Yeah, Allah. Take that statement away, and don't shy away from it. Yeah? So you don't have to do it in front of us. You can come back here always, the brothers are here. But take that intention away, so when you're on the bus, or like you said tonight, think about it, ponder about it. It's Yusuf, one right? statement. Yusuf, yeah. Yusuf. I will forget, mm. yeah. Will Have you got your name? You should can put it in my phone. I, I, or, or your phone. I don't know. Let's keep messing with my phone. Mm. And you should worship only him, George, with all your heart, George. Not a man, not sticks, not stones, not spirits. Jesus, when he was in Gethsemane, he moved away from the disciples and he fell on his face and he prayed to God. If you saw him in the garden of Gethsemane on Mount Gethsemane praying, do you think you would pray to him or would you pray with him? Remember the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. The disciples came to him and said, teach us how to pray. He said, our Father who art in heaven. He never said me in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He never said my name. Jesus had plenty ample opportunity to tell the disciples to worship me. Never once. Think if, if Jesus is God and his mission would come to earth so people could worship him. You think we'd have some clear message from Jesus saying that I am God, but the Bible never says that. Well, when they say Jesus is God, I believe it's more that Jesus is an extension of God. That's what it's saying in a sense, because it's like you are exten an extension of your father, mm -hmm. because you're your father's son, you're an extension of him. That's what Jesus is God means in that sense. I believe it's like Jesus is an extension of God. Extension? Yeah, it's like, this is God. And Jesus is God because he represents God, so he's mm -hmm. an extension of God. But this is the thing, you fall into all of these linguistic problems. He is the son of God, but he is God himself. Do you then they say he's the son of himself? If Jesus is God and he is the son of him, uh, God, that means he's the son of himself. Fall into like multiple problems, not just one. Then you have to ask yourself where are we getting this understanding from? Because Jesus never taught that. His disciples, after Jesus, the earliest Christians, they never believed in concepts such as Trinity. These rose later in councils, economical councils that took place afterwards in the time of Constantinople, Constantine the Emperor, like in the year 325. But Jesus himself, the words of him is clear. He said, the greatest, why do you thou call me good when there is only one who is good? And that is the Father in heaven. John, it's eternal life that you should know the one true God, the Father and Jesus Christ, whom He, the Father, has sent. He makes clear distinction between the two. And I think if you go even back to the Bible, you can see this. 
you know. So it's like, where do you even get the Bible from? Like Jesus came, as you say in Christianity, he's preached, but no one witnessed him. It said in the Bible that the old four took him and fled, and Peter uh, deceived him thrice. Do you remember that? Yeah. Just before the crucifixion, yeah? or the taking of Jesus. Yeah. But okay, no problem. Give me two more minutes. What do you think about that, though? What I've said so far. As in, if no one is there from from witnesses, they all forsook him and fled. And then you get the idea that Jesus, he died, he rose. And then who is who has, who is reporting all of these incidents? And who is writing this? Because the Bible is written many years afterwards. Ask yourself, George, who is writing these books? Why are they being written? Why do the Jews reject Jesus? Why do they reject him as being God? You know? But anyway, we have some material, take some material. Are you sure you don't have any questions? You must have. I can see something is going through your mind. Not really. It's like, you know when you understand something to a level, but you don't necessarily have to go to mm -hmm. That's sort of the situation I'm in. I can't lie to you because I think of that sort of thing. I need to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joe. No problem. But well, think about it. Take some material. Look at Islam. You know what Islam believes in, right? Yeah, I know what Islam Yeah, what does it believe in? Sure. It believes in, okay, the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad? As the final messenger to mankind, all yeah. of mankind. Exactly. Yeah? Muhammad as the final messenger and Allah is Allah is good, yes. Just like the Arab Christians, they all believe there is God and they call him Allah. Yeah. This is what the Muslims believe in Allah. One God and one worship to that one God. No, we don't worship men, spirits, holy spirits or any other type of men. You know, we, we believe just as Jesus did. We believe in only one God and we worship only Him. The Prophet Muhammad is the finality of all of the Prophets that came before. And the Quran is the final message. message. So he had the Torah, the Injil, the Psalms, all of these books which are given before to the Prophets. But we say the Quran is the final, final book revealed by God Almighty. Anyway, take your time. Feel, feel free to help yourself, George, with any material. Yeah? I'll give you this one. It's a purpose of life. Think about, about things. You have a good day, mate. Take care.